I was actually initially drawn to Shane. Um, I saw him before I ever saw Maggie uh, because he had these tattoos. He had this massive tattoo on his neck. And initially, I was, I was like, what is that? But then I kind of thought about it, and I was like, you know, if I met a Maori tribesman with a tattoo on his face, I wouldn't stand there looking at him like he was, you know, a piece of trash. I, I, I would take it as a cultural difference and, and maybe go ask him about it. So that's what I did. Um, and through Shane, you know, I met Maggie because at the time he was holding her daughter, Memphis. I, I, I could never have predicted. And it's, it's ironic because when I look at the photos now, not the photos of the night that the violence actually happened, but their, just their family dynamic that I was photographing all the way up to this event, now when I look at the photos, I'm like, how did I not see it coming? There's so many pictures where he's in her physical space in a very kind of um, oppressive way, in a very invasive way. He's like, he, he's always like two inches from her. But I think that's the thing about, um, about family violence, about domestic violence is a lot of it is so insidious. And a lot of it ends up being, um, it ends up being stuff that you could very easily mistake for romantic. And I think that, that that sort of speaks to how poor of a job we do uh, educating, you know, educating young people about healthy relationship patterns. You know, we kind of give them the idea that jealousy is romantic and a person always being in your space, in your physical space, is romantic. And, you know, that it's totally acceptable in a fight to call somebody names or to block them from leaving the room. Um, and that that's just sort of part and parcel of being in a relationship. But that's, those are actually all pretty abusive behaviors. I think I read, a, I read a book once that said that you have to do something for 10,000 hours to become an expert at it. And I'm not even close to that. But um, I did find that at some point in shooting, there was a tipping point for me where thinking about metering and thinking about framing and everything just became sort of like preternatural. It, it just became something that, you know, I thought about consciously much less than I was thinking about the scene playing out in front of me. When it was going on, like the, the emotion just kind of left me. I, it, it's the kind of thing where, I mean, if you get emotional in that situation, you, you know, you could get hurt and you, you're not thinking logically. So I kind of, I just, pushed the emotion out of the way and, and thought about, like, I got very logical and was like, okay, what needs to happen right now? The whole time I'm just sort of trying to, almost trying to predict where they're going to move or, you know, where I should be for a shot. Um, but it happens really, really fast. You kind of have to develop instincts for it. So it's interesting because the story really started out being about Shane and about the issue of recidivism and how terribly difficult we make it for people who've been incarcerated to um, readjust to being on the outside. Uh, but it ended up really being a story about Maggie in the end. She's actually a remarkably brave young woman because she did what a lot of women, you know, are really afraid to do. She left him. 